What is going on, family? Welcome to another episode of your weekly M Cubed cryptocurrency portions. It's your boy Adam. Let's get into it. Boom. All right, bet. So this week, not much has changed with Bitcoin. Bitcoin's still doing its dandy old thing on this chart right here. It hasn't really made any higher highs or lower lows. It's kind of just been trading within this range right here. It's actually been pinching in. So it's been really just like trading within this range, pinching inward. I'm trying to, I'm trying to draw out as I'm telling y'all to kind of make this the best visualization. But it's been forming a wedge, trading within a range. It's kind of premature to really determine anything at this point. So we really just got to give this more room to breathe before we do anything else. But in my eyes, what I see over here is just a big old area of accumulation. You know, this is typically like how supply and demand works. And for those of you who haven't really seen what supply and demand is, Richard Wyckoff is the person who really discovered and explained to the general public what supply and demand actually is he was the first person to really like uncover this to the mass public about more than 100 years ago or coming up on 100 years i'm not really exactly sure on the exact date but it's around that frame of time and you can basically like break it down to this oversimplified picture right here and i'll kind of show y'all within this if you just take smooth out the edges of these lines and just look at it from a large time frame point of view you can see a sort of markup a distribution markdown quick accumulation massive markup little consolidation here there was a nice little distribution and then a redistribution a little markdown another redistribution and now this is just a gigantic oh gigantic accumulation how you could also see it from a major investors point of view is mini reaccumulation right here and this is just one gigantic distribution overall a markdown a nice reaccumulation before the bigger mark up in the next few months time that's about to happen because this right here this little area right here is just you know a couple months that's literally all it is. I'm on the eight hour time frame. Y'all can see in the background right here, I'm in an eight hour time frame. That means each and every single one of these candlesticks right here, that is eight hours in time. I'm really looking at it from a larger, more step back point of view, point of interest. You know, I'm really looking at this for the long term, guys. This is more of investing advice, not really trading advice, because, you know, in the trading space, opinions and standpoints can change in a very short amount of time. And I just can't pump out this content fast enough to be up to date on that every single day of the week. So maybe moving forward, I could start doing that. But in the meantime, I'm just going to be looking at it from an investor standpoint, you know, as a status quo. So I actually did draw out a little something something for y'all. So I have this for y'all and this little uh these little ghost bars that i have over here what they represent and i'm going to show you like how i cop where i copied these from but what these really represent over here is this was actually a uh, copy a carbon copy of the same like price action pattern as the price action within this box right here and the reason I did this is because this was off of a correction from a previous price action. What I'm kind of seeing here is on the big time frame. This, and I'm gonna make this over here. Or you know what? Regular old box. There we go. This looks a lot like this right here. This right here. It's kind of like uh, clones of each other, right? In a sense. So this is kind of what I'm, uh, what I'm kind of envisioning for the, like the near future of Bitcoin. And this kind of lines up with you know like a few hundred thousand. I mean, sorry, one hundred, ten thousand, eleven hundred. 
is by like the end of September. And then if we kind of like go off of that, I mean, shoot, we could piece it together later on. This is a fun old tool. It's called Go Bars Pattern. I was about to say Ghost Pattern. It's actually Bars Pattern because I know there's one tool on here called uh, Ghost Something, but that is not the one to use. This is the one. It's very useful, very nifty. It really does line up with these zones that I've marked up for the past couple episodes here. And you know, you can kind of see like the pivot points lining up over here. You know, typically in accumulation schematics from Richard Wyckoff, a lot of them do have a spring involved in it. And you know, something like this over here would, I would characterize as, you know, a pretty flawless spring in my eyes. Something that can shake most you know amateur investors out of a market like this for all the you know big money investors to come in and buy it all up from them liquidate all the all the people with small paper hands basically and then wait for everything to mark up from there okay and it kind of lines up with these zones you know a nice little slight break slash test of this resistance point a nice uh nice big old spray and then it comes up here sweeps this high that's over here all right then it comes down makes a big crash this is probably something like an elon musk tweet over here all right comes down retest this low establishes a floor comes up establishes another floor at this other pivotal point and then it comes up continues up slightly sweeps this previous high comes down back up again does a little bit of price action between these zones comes back down establishes a higher floor around here making this another pivotal point and then comes and just sweeps this previous all-time high all together comes back down in the next few and then just retest it basically because if you guys have not noticed before price really likes to retest key levels basically i'm gonna remove this and uh, kind of show you exactly what I have in mind whenever I say that. So let's say right here, I'm gonna do a box to just kind of show y'all exactly what I'm looking at. And then pay attention to this area right here, okay? This high right here, it gets broken and then retested before the continuation up. It always retests areas. Like, honestly, you know how you've always heard the term history always repeats itself and stuff like that. Well, it happens in the market as well. You can see like this is a really the, the first point of, you know, resistance over here where it starts kind of like interacting around with it. I'm going to show you where I got this green line. It's not just a random line that I thought up with. I'm like, yo, you know what? Seventy-eight thousand two hundred fourteen dollars. That's gonna be the area. I didn't just randomly think of that number, guys. But I'm gonna show you guys why I actually use that number. This was actually a Fibonacci extension from the high to the low of this movement right here, because this is the pivotal point that just determined the big sell-off of Bitcoin back in the start of May, right? And if you guys look here, and if I put on my extension, it's the 1.618 level. For those of you who use Fibonacci a lot, 1.618 is a very significant zone. And the fact that this bars pattern lines up with this 1.618 is very, very promising. Obviously, I don't have a crystal ball, but it's just good to see that this analysis has some confluence here with a bunch of different measuring tools that I've been using. With that being said, I can't really say that it's gonna do that. We're just gonna have to see in what direction Bitcoin breaks within this trading range over here. And, you know, pray for the best. At any point, you know, any market could crash, really. Like, if we're being real here, any market could crash at any given point. The real estate, commodities, stocks, indices, and cryptocurrency hasn't happened so far now let's go on to ethereum all right over here ethereum has been looking a little bit nicer L looks a little bit better than bitcoin in terms of the flow of price action this just looks like psychological torture 
for anybody who's been investing in Bitcoin while Ethereum's giving some more nice, broad, smooth waves over here. And if we really zoom in over here, I'm going to use this area right here because I see a very nice lineup and it's, I'm, I'm about to show y'all why but over here this actually has not is it's been doing super healthy price action over here it's not broken the previous higher high i don't consider this a higher low i would not consider this a low that if broken would can be considered like the start of a bear market and by the way this is a one hour time frame so the structure in this isn't as strong but it's just nice to see a bullish trend within this time frame okay because bitcoin ain't as pretty really at the moment so with that being said you know liking to see these candles closing above the 886 zone over here the 886 level it's tried to poke down but did not stay there for long actually basically rubber banded off of this and did not go back below I'm liking to see that it actually broke the structure over here in my eyes this is very very bullish conditions really lining up with the EIP, if EIP 1559 fundamental analysis that I did last week. I'm really excited for that. And, you know, just kind of waiting on for it. On the bigger time frame of things, though, we're really just waiting for it to break this high over here before you can really say that it's bullish on the larger time frame again. Because like uh, Bitcoin, you know, it swept this low over here. And so we can't necessarily say it's a bullish market on the higher time frame just yet. Keep our fingers crossed, hope for the best, and really just hodl, you know? Keep those bulletproof mindsets, everybody, and, you know, make sure you don't give up your crypto prematurely. All right? I'm here to make everybody some money. Now we're going on to CoinGecko, my favorite website in the world whenever it comes to researching some coins. So over here, as per usual, we got Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Tether as the largest market cap coins on here. As always, nothing new has changed here, but we like to see some greens. We can see that, you know, there's some greens. Majority of the, majority of the last seven days is green and bullish, which is good to see in the crypto space, of course. Not a lot of red. That's good, and that kind of just follows Bitcoin, you know? Bitcoin's like the weather, really. Over here, let's look at the 24-hour volume. Sort of a whole lot of the same thing, really. You know, we got Tether, Bitcoin, Ethereum still in the top three. Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum Classic, following suit behind. Dogecoin, surprisingly or unsurprisingly for those of you like Doge diehards out there, following sort of close behind uh, ethereum and bitcoin but not really that close you know whenever you look at the whenever you look at the actual numbers over here okay we got 3 billion trading volume that's cool compared to 22 billion that's more than seven times but you know hey trust the numbers men lie women lie numbers don't but then again you know it's doing a lot better than you know the other 8000 420 coins out there 20 ish let's just say now for this top seven day gainers i'm loving the axie infinity as the top seven day gainer over here that's beautiful to see because this is actually a really solid nft project and i'm liking to see that the nfts are really performing well lately it's good to see that axie infinity by the way is a really solid project if y'all are looking to you know get into that I highly recommend you know looking into it i'm not going to spoil too much about it i do encourage people who look into the crypto space to really do their own due diligence but looking into stuff like this you got all your resources right here you got access to the community you know what the contract is you know which explorers there are and the website where you can read more on the token you even see the categories man you got gaming nfts says axie infinity and token because i mean obviously this is a token that's about as much as i'm gonna spoil but it has some really really great partnerships people really look into it titan swap i'm not sure about that coin it's not really something that i've vetted uh so far they don't really have any big partners that i'm kind of familiar with 
unlike Axie Infinity, where you got like Binance and Samsung, and that's just the name of a couple. Titan Swap, there's no partners that they have that I can even pronounce. And that's not always a bad thing, but at least like a partner that I could recognize would be pretty swell. Seems like it might be something that's pretty big in Asia, but the tokenomics, although, just don't line up with me. You know, you got a circulating supply of 10 billion and a pretty low market cap at that. So unless they're bringing something new to the table, this might just be one of those coins that, you know, just had an event and a lot of people wanted to get in to get a bunch of free Titan Swap coins that are about to immediately sell and dump off. But other than that, you know, KuCoin, that's a centralized exchange. Obviously they've been doing pretty well according to the seven day performance. And then you got some other pretty nice coins following closely behind that. And we got Synthetics Network, Flow Token, Ecomi, Ave, Compound, Decentraland, The Graph, all amazing, amazing tokens. Uniswap, not too far behind as well. So that's probably one of the only exchanges I actually invest in whenever it comes to, you know, buying up their token. But to each their own, always do your due diligence whenever you're researching a project that you want to invest in just to know like what you're putting your money into and you know what kind of communities do they have because i'm never going to invest into a community that just consists of all traders let's be real here but that's a story for another day <laughs> but honestly beyond that guys there's not too much other stuff left to cover here but i do appreciate you know everybody coming in hopping on to this session i know i've been really really busy lately i've just been caught up with a lot of new business ventures recently got the whole production thing going i've been actually booking a lot of new clients so that's been going amazingly you know just, just making some moves on uh, some other business stuff but make sure to keep up to date with that on my instagram page if y'all want to keep in touch if y'all want to follow my journey i'll tag this uh, Instagram somewhere in the screen here and y'all can keep up to date on what's going on in Adam's life. I appreciate y'all. Y'all have an amazing Friday and I'll see you guys again in next week's episode. I'm out.